Hello and welcome to the Reykjavik Greipan's newscast. My name is Valur Grettison, I'm the editor-in-chief at the Reykjavik Greipan. With me is, of course, Polly, uh, the chief of morale officer, uh, and, of course, Art, is holding the camera. We haven't seen him now for a while. Uh, we, we, we haven't seen you for a while, basically, or you or me, however that works. Uh, and uh, that's because our dear Art needs to have some... He's actually waving, but uh, he needs some uh, small rest. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed uh, everything we had instead. Uh, before we start, uh, I want to tell you, of course, about uh, our Christmas vault. Uh, and we have we have rings of Christmas stuff, actually. If you go to our uh, to our shop, yeah, yeah, Polly. See, it's like I haven't taken it out for a while. It's such a good weather. But Christmas stuff, we have this on our uh, homepage. If you go to grapevine.is, you will find something called shop. You can also find it down there uh, in the in the link be, be, below. Uh, the, our Yule lads, we have 13 of them. Uh, we have a sadist kind of a character, which is their mother. This is Grilla. Uh, nobody likes her. She's a, she eats children, and they also have a cat. But he also he just eats the poor children. So it's a uh, yeah, it's it's grim, fun, uh, interesting, and weird. Uh, we have a lot of stuff. Also, uh, we have Christmas candy. Uh, everything you need basically just to have a proper Christmas uh, in, in wherever you are. So, uh, without, the, without further ado, Polly, Cody, we are going for the news. Uh, we're going to start with uh, a fatal accident that happened in uh, Kirkjufell in Grundafjörður. Uh, I know... Could you, could you, you're good. Now, Kirkjufell is one of these Instagram stars that have come out of the Iceland tourism. Uh, and it's incredibly beautiful. Uh, it's in Grundafjörður, which is, uh, used to be actually the capital of Iceland. Imagine that. And uh, this is when, like in the, the 18th century, when we thought that uh, we were going to build everything around Grundafjörður, but Reykjavik became uh, our capital later on. Uh, the, the mountain itself is wonderful. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's really picturesque, it's really beautiful. There's a waterfall close by there, but it's, you can just see the shape of it. It's, it's quite treacherous, if anything. And um, mountains in Iceland, although not very high, they can often be like that. Uh, so. Uh, there was a tourist that died. He fell to his death uh, 10 meters uh, when he was going up there in like uh, there has been a rainy weather uh, and so on. Uh, so the, 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 the paths there were treacherous, I guess, uh, and he fell down. Uh, this is becoming somewhat of a problem uh, because there have three people have died there past, uh, <laughs> past uh, four years. Uh, which is quite high when it comes to, like, death of tourism in Iceland. <laughs> Paul is going to try to get those scooses. Uh, there was a paramedic, actually, that was uh, interviewed uh, in the Icelandic media, and he was saying that this, something needs to be done. It's a, it's a little bit too much to have, four, th th like, uh, these three deaths there in four years. Uh, we, we, like, we have dangerous spots in Iceland. For example, the Black Beach, uh, close to Viki Myrdal, Reynisfjara. Uh, a lot of people have died there. Uh, well, and when I say a lot, keep in mind like four to ten people in five years or something like that is a lot. Uh, just because it's so small. Uh, so he said that the, the mountain is obviously harder than uh, people often think. Uh, they are often going up there, tourism tourists that do not perhaps understand the situation completely. Just keep in mind if you're going up there, uh, be careful because this is, uh, I mean, in general, just be careful with these mountains. They can just be quite dangerous. You have to check out the weather forecast, be in good shoes, don't go there up in your, in your, in your sneakers and so on. Uh, and, and like, just that could even save your life. So. Uh, that's it for that. Uh, to darker news, uh, bullyism. Uh, 
there was a very uh, nasty case of bullyism that came out or it was broken out in the media yesterday. A 12-year-old girl in Hafnafjörður, my hometown, she was uh, she tried to take her own life uh, after she was bullied in, uh, brutally uh, in, in, in the town. Uh, she's in a sco school called Hrönvalla Skóli. Uh, it's, uh, it's the closest one to, like, when you're driving out of the town, you can, like, come into, well, when you come into Iceland and you're driving to Hafnafjörður, this is the first neighborhood you will see, basically. Uh, now, this girl, uh, uh, she was, like, uh, like, see, like, uh, what can I say? There are some, like, uh, social problems when it comes to her. It often is when it comes to bullyism. Uh, but uh, her mother, uh, she went on, like, on Facebook and she described this horrible uh, violence that she, this girl has been subjected to. Uh, and uh, which resulted that we saw a clip yesterday. I'm not going to show it to you. It's, it's absolutely painful to watch this where these uh, other girls were beating this girl up brutally uh, in, the, in a shopping mall in Kopovus. Uh, it was horrible to see, to be honest, and very humiliating for the girl. Uh, not only that, there are like messages like online bullying, uh, which is incredibly nasty. I have never seen anything this ugly, to be honest. Uh, when it comes to these kids, uh, and it was just, it was heartbreaking. Uh, yesterday also, they, they uh, like, uh, stepped forward, the mother and the daughter, uh, in both the uh, roof for national broadcast as well as uh, Channel 2, the other, like, biggest news uh, station in TV. Uh, and they were talking about what happened and how it uh, happened and so on. They were also criticizing heavily the schools uh, and the school itself. Uh, and they haven't responded to any of this. Although the parent association in the school, they have demanded a meeting with the board of the school uh, and they want to know uh, exactly what is being, being done and so on. And the thing is, this is always a bit, we, we see this occasionally. Uh, bullyism is obviously a thing in Iceland. It's less than it was when, for example, when I was younger. It was more of a wild west in some ways. Kids are, of course, they can be quite cruel, if, to be honest. Uh, so the thing is that, uh, like, uh, what happens often when it comes to these children, they are often blamed, uh, the, the victim is often blamed for the violence in some ways. They are uh, moved from the school uh, and they are somehow sent to the psychiatrist and so on, but never the, the one that are responsive, responsible for the violence. But this violence was on an, another level. This was uh, straight up physical assault which uh, the, the mother actually, uh, she pressed charges to the police. The police say that they have a limited option when it comes to uh, children that are so young and, and inflicting violence. Uh, and uh, so this might be, uh, it seems like it's gridlocked. Uh, and not only that, there are like operations within the schools, like rules. Uh, we follow these uh, plans, like uh, we call it the plan of Olvius. Uh, I think I'm saying that correctly. Uh, and so on, and these are to, to combat like uh, bullyism like uh, from early on. But there is not much to see that the school is doing when it comes to actual bullyism. So it's, it's going to be interesting to see how the school is going to respond to this. Uh, everybody's in shock. Icelanders are very, very shocked by this. Uh, I think this is going to be a very healthy discussion actually, just about what to do more and how also uh, there was, uh, just to connect this perhaps to another uh, news story, incredibly in interesting news story, uh, there was a, like a revolution almost when it came to, uh, came to the, the college called M. Hau, the college in Hamrasleif. Uh, it's a very famous one in Iceland and the, the, the girls in the school actually had an uprising after uh, they said that the, the, there was, uh, some of them have had uh, pressed charges for sexual violence against their, uh, like, brother, like, not brothers, like, uh, the, the school, uh, boys in the same school. Uh, and they said, uh, when you press charges, at least what you can do is expel the kid, the boy, so the, the victim or the survivor don't have to meet him on the, on the halls or in, in, in math or wherever. Uh, of course, the school was very late to respond to this, respond. They didn't really do much about it to begin with until these girls took it to the halls 
there was a huge uh, like news series about this uh, and the school apologized in the end and even the uh, the ministry of, of children in iceland he came out and he said this had to be changed now the same rules actually apply here when it comes to bullyism right uh, that is you you should not the victim should not be being forced to meet their uh, attackers in class uh, although the, the victim should not be punished either by taking him out of the school while the attackers nothing changes for them right so it's going to be interesting to see how this goes uh, it's very new right now but uh, we will hopefully talk a little bit more in depth about this later on even in our podcast if we uh, when we actually have the time, it's, it's, it's very packed with us right now. Um, so, yeah. And more about uh, the police and terrorism. I know that you're all tired of this, terrorism in Iceland, right? Uh, I... <laughs> Can I? Uh, these two boys, that uh, a man, they were arrested, gun nuts, basically. Uh, they are still in custody. Uh, they are not in isolation anymore. They were there for three weeks, which is a lot, in my opinion. Uh, but the, the judges, they stopped that, so they are now just in custody. Uh, and there are more news coming out of like what this was. Uh, it seems that they, these two men, which have a lot of guns between themselves, uh, they were discussing killing random people. <laughs> Now, uh, was they planning to do that? Uh, that's what is unclear, actually. Uh, there are like very famous characters in Iceland that have come out. They have been asked to go, like, come and to the police and give a statement and to, because of the investigation. Among these people is the leader of the Socialist Party in Iceland. His name is Gunnar Smári. He used to be my editor-in-chief, by the way. Uh, and then there is uh, the, a controversial leader of the Union of Appling, which is Solveig Anna. And even the, the environmental minister, uh, Guðlaugu Thor Thorðarsson, uh, he, he was also mentioned in this, uh, but uh, they actually thought that he was still a minister of justice, they of, of, of foreign affairs, sorry, but of course he's not anymore, which basically shows that they were perhaps not paying close attention to the political atmosphere in Iceland. Uh, also, they were talking about drone strikes to, on, on uh, our parliament, Alþingi. Now, drone strikes sounds quite shocking to be honest uh, but were they planning it in in a in a realistic way uh no not really this was a very uh very raw uh boyish uh, conversations and as we understand it now it doesn't seem like they were talking about this in a serious way for example uh, when they were talking about uh, gunnar smári my former editor-in-chief uh, they were saying that, uh, like, uh, like they were just, it was in question form, like, what would happen if I would just shoot the man now or something like that? Um, of course, there's an easy answer for that. You will be <laughs> forever tarnished as well as, <laughs> well, as well as you would go to jail, same as that. But, uh, but it, like, even them, like, of course, Gunnar Smarty took this very seriously. Uh, but uh, and not only that, he actually named them afterwards, uh, these boys, uh, and also uh, like, uh, ha like uh, uh, published a, a pictures, picture of them. Uh, and these boys, like, and keep in mind, like when it comes to Icelandic uh, in, like news environment, it's not given to actually say the names of the people that are in custody, uh, and people are not often uh, like with photos with them and so on. This is. Uh, there are rules very strict about this. Icelandic media is, is quite conservative about this. We have to go through, like, uh, there are questions that we have to ask ourselves before we do that. Uh, but, uh, and, but he was the first to do this, so these men are now, uh, like, we know exactly who they are. And they are, like, uh, in, in, like, when it comes to, like, the internet, they seem like quite the nobodies. Uh, so, uh, on top of that, we have also another interesting discussion, which is, uh, about uh, the police. Now, the police have been trying to use the opportunity to uh, have like a, a lobby, if you will, the ideas about them getting like greater powers uh, and so on. Some people like to the right are uh, often uh, prone to say yes to this, but uh, lawyers as well as the pirate party, uh, even the, the community in the, in the, in the, in the university, 
are saying that, well, if you're going to do this, uh, they need better uh, surveillance because it seems that the surveillance with uh, police, like who's policing the police, is very weak in Iceland. So weak, actually, that it's, uh, it's, we're seeing now how, like, uh, like damaged slash, like, uh, vulnerable we are in, in truth. So it's going to be interesting to see how that, uh, where, where that leads us, because right now is the, it's the, it's the district attorney that actually does this policy, uh, but they are uh, like understaffed, and they, they they really don't have time for all of this. So it's like I can't see that they have an effective uh, uh, like uh, surveillance with the police in in any aspect. So this is it for the news. Uh, wonderful day it's been. Fine actually this uh, autumn here. Uh, we have had a few storms. Uh, pretty bad one. One was pretty bad. The other, other one was not as bad as we feared. Uh, but in general, Iceland is uh, getting colder and colder. The sun is lower, which I love actually. The mornings are now darker finally. Uh, and uh, our seasonal melancholia is coming in. <laughs> so on. So, but that's fine also. We just, we're just a little bit. Uh, we speak less <laughs> when that happens, uh, which is perhaps not that bad. Uh, also, uh, Iceland Airwaves is on like uh, in the beginning of November, so we're going to go all in for that, of course. But we'll tell you more about that next week, of course. But until then, then remember, of course, our shop. I have to say, I absolutely love this. If you remember with us, I'll tell you a little bit about this in the extra. So, until next time, goodbye.